For detailed instructions on how to make this shabby chic china cabinet on a budget, just keep watching. Hey guys, Beth here. Um, today I'm going to be doing a DIY in which I create a wall hanging china hutch in a shabby chic look. I've been seeing these a lot in the French country and design magazines, but haven't been able to find one in an antique store at a price that I liked. I am the ultimate DIY on a budget girl, design it on a dime. So what I decided to do was find either a dresser or a desk hutch and redo it in a way that makes it a dining room china cabinet. So what I found, I was in Goodwill yesterday. You can find a lot of DIY projects in Goodwill. And I found a desk hutch, the top of a desk only, for $10. And uh, I'm going to be redoing that today in a way in which it looks like a china cabinet. There are a lot of little elements that you can add that give it more of a shabby chic look and also um, give it more of a functional quality in which you have plate racks and things like that. So what supplies do we need? Uh, I decided to make uh, plate inserts uh, to organize my plates. So I will be creating these and the supplies that you need to make these are going to be 5 16 inch round dowel rods and then also a square dowel rod uh, about three quarter inches. Uh, you can do a little bit smaller if you want to depending upon the amount of space that you have. These can be purchased at Home Depot. Uh, this 5 16 inch dowel rod was about 99 cents and then the three quarter inch square dowel rod was about a dollar and 13 cents. I needed um, five of these and then I needed four of these to get the pieces that I wanted. Uh, so essentially when you're making those, you will be making two for each section so that your plates can slide in accordingly, uh, which I will show you how to do. You will also need wood glue. Uh, you will need a tape measure uh, to get your initial measurements. You will be needing a metal or wood ruler. These are better when cutting wood or when uh, doing definitive measurements uh, because you always want to measure twice and cut once just to make sure that all of your measurements are correct and because these are a little bit more sturdy whereas a ruler is a little bit more floppy you always want to do measurements one of, one of these these can be purchased at any uh, hardware store or at the Dollar Tree actually you can even buy a level at the Dollar Tree just so you know um, also you will need um, four actually eight uh, small wood screws uh, less than an inch um, and you will need uh, a hanging system uh, because this will be hanging on the wall and it is going to be heavy. You will want something that has mollies um, or anchors if you guys don't know what a molly is. Um, and uh, I found this at Lowe's. This is a hangman hanging system. It's a hook system and it allows this to hang flush against the wall. What I liked about it is it holds up to 200 pounds. Uh, this is going to be a heavy piece. Uh, it's lightweight now because it has nothing in it. But once you add your plates and things, it's going to get significantly heavier. So I'm actually going to try to use two of these. Uh, which will hold up to 400 pounds, so hopefully it won't fall. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you get something that's sturdy, especially if you live in an apartment. I live in an apartment, and we only have drywall. We don't. I, don't, I have yet to find a stud in this apartment, so um, you know you don't want to tear your walls down or for your plates to fall. Uh, you will also need a saw. Um, I only use a hand saw. My mom. Even though I'm 32 years old, my mom will not allow me to use a jigsaw because she thinks I will cut my fingers off. So I use a handsaw. These are really cheap. You can buy them anywhere. Um, you will need a pencil. Handy dandy pencil. Uh, you will need, um, I bought a decorative, I have nails so it's hard to pick up stuff. Uh, I bought a little decorative piece uh, to give it more of a French country or shabby chic look. Uh, I'll be adding it to the top of the dresser. Uh, this was $5 at Home Depot. Uh, you will also need a primer if you plan to paint it. Um, I use the Rust-Oleum 2x Ultra Gray Primer. 
this is a really good primer and it also brings out your colors really nicely. You can buy this at Home Depot or Lowe's um, and it's a flat. So that's where you get, you get that. Uh, my dining room is done in pink. So I will be doing a flat pink paint from Valspar. Uh, I have found that Rust-Oleum, Home Depot primarily cover, uh, carries Rust-Oleum. Uh, you can't really purchase any of the Valspar flat paints at Lowe's, I mean at Home Depot that I've found. So I buy this at Lowe's. Um, Rust-Oleum does have more glossy colors. Uh, and if you're doing the shabby chic look, you definitely want to stay with flat paints. So I always just hit up Lowe's for a flat color. They've got pink, white, blue, a mint green. Uh, they have all of those in the flat colors in Valspar, and it gives really good coverage. Uh, you'll also want a piece of sandpaper, uh, which is here somewhere. But uh, if you want to like rough up the edges a little bit, give it more of a worn look. Uh, and lastly, you'll need a drill. Yes. Um, with a 5 16 drill bit to make your holes for your dowel rods. So here is what I, you will need to do first. Uh, you will need to measure your cubbies uh, to get your measurements for your plate racks. Now that you'll want to take three measurements total, uh, well actually six measurements total because you'll want to measure each one of them twice just to make sure that you have it accurate. Uh, so your first measurement is going to be the width of your cubby. Now what I've chosen to do here, I will be making plate racks in two of the four or the six cubbies that are here. Uh, I will be making plate racks for this section over here and then also this section here. So what I found was that uh, the width of my cabinet, and I've already taken these measurements but I'll do it for you guys again. The width of my cabinet is about nine and a half inches, roughly, nine and a half, and then it is 12 inches tall, and then depth-wise, it is about nine inches. So, um, I have already got a sample cut here for you guys, um, but you'll want to, you know, I had to do this a couple times. <laughs> Because, for whatever reason, even though I measured twice, it didn't come out the right way. So, basically what you'll want to do is, you know, cut samples, play around with it, see what will fit, what will get a snug fit so that it's not moving around and that you don't have gaps and things like that. And, um, essentially, you will want to cut four of these pieces for each cubby and then however many pieces that you will need for your uh, plate segments. Um, I found that six plates fit comfortably in each one of my sections here. So what I did, um, I measured the length of my square die rod and just divided it by six, uh, which ended up being about an inch and a half total for each section with a little bit extra on each side. So that is the finished product here. And you'll need two of these segments for each cubby. So you'll need one for the back and then you will also need one for the front. So it will fit in like that uh, once complete. Uh, and what you want to do on each one of your dowel rods, the square ones, you will want to use your 5 16 inch drill bit and drill a, a very small hole, which I've already done for you here. Um, in there and you will want to have all of your little sections measured in here and just drill about halfway down into the block so that your dowel rods will fit in there comfortably um, like so just like that so it will fit right in there and then once you put them in there you will use some wood glue so that they stay um, so you will put that in there like that. And my mom's calling. Okay, so I have fully primed my dresser hutch um, in the gray. I found that one can did an okay job, but if you have anything larger, this piece is about 40 by 40 inches. If you have anything larger, 
you will probably want two cans. So one can did for me, but you'll probably want two. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the pink um, on both my plate grids and the dresser. Hutch. Trying to get it. Whatever you want to call it. Make it your own. Okay, I have done my first coat of the Valspar Pink Flat. Um, I did find that it needed a lot more than anticipated. This was about two cans. So I'm going to go back to Lowe's because I only bought two cans because I thought it was going to be enough and get probably another two cans. As you can see, you can still see some of the primer there. Um, so we're going to have to do two cans or two additional cans. So it's probably going to take about four cans of the flat pink for this project. And we're back. Um, I'm officially done painting my china cabinet uh, and I think it turned out pretty great. I had to go to Lowe's as I mentioned earlier and get some more paint. This actually ended up needing six cans of paint which is quite a bit but um, I feel like the reason that it needed so much was because I did use the gray primer. If you don't plan to scuff up or create a distressed look on your cabinet I would not use a gray primer, I would use a white primer, um, but because I plan to scuff it up, I want some of that gray to show through on some of my scuff spots. So here it is, it's completely done, it required six cans of paint, and I think it turned out pretty great. Um, so what we're going to do now, we're going to start installing all of our little pieces and parts uh, that I have purchased. Uh, I did make the mistake of going to the decor all at Lowe's. And I found another trim piece that I actually liked better. It's a little bit bigger um, and I've actually already painted it white. So I'm going to be placing it at the top. Um, I've already pre-painted my uh, little plate inserts here. So we're going to be installing those. And then uh, once we install those, we are going to distress everything. It put in our hanger and then we are done. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to actually install my little decal that I've purchased here. Um, this was actually the same price. It was still only $5.62 um, and it's actually much bigger and I like it a lot better. So I'll just use the other one for another project that I'm sure I will come up with soon. So let's go ahead and put this in. What we want to do, I'm going to put it at the top and we're going to measure um, the entire width and find your center before we do any gluing. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, oh, and also one other thing, I did purchase these uh, little hooks here. Um, I'm gonna put them on the bottom uh, and put cups on them to hang from the bottom. I didn't mention that earlier, but I got inspired and bought some. So that's what happens when you go to Lowe's in the middle of your project. You find more things to do. All right, so I'm going to move over here, and um, to do this, we're going to put uh, wood glue um, that I had bought earlier, and we're just going to measure. So it looks like my cabinet is a total of about 39 and 3 quarters uh, wide. So the center of that is going to be about, what is that, 19, 19 and no, 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 three quarters, 19 and a half, 19 and something. I'm thinking 19 and a half. I don't want to do math right now. So we're going to do 19 and a half. So I'm just going to mark it with a pencil. in the center or what I feel like looks like the center. Um, if you want to do a more accurate measurement you can always calculate and do all that business. But obviously you're not going to be always measuring. So I'm going to line up my center piece here. Um, and you want to make sure that it's kind of even on all sides. Um, I usually use like any kind of design elements and things like that to make sure. Um, so here I'm going to make sure these are at the very bottom, almost touching the end of the, 
the edge there. So I'm actually going to mark here at the bottom and here at the top center of my pieces. That way when I get ready to glue it, I'm just going to line up my marks here on the end as well. That way I know where I'm placing everything. So you want to make sure that you put enough glue, but not too much because you don't want it running around. So you just do a little bit, kind of spread out evenly on here. Now you can add in a little um, brad nail if you want to on here. Um, that's just if you want to add that on uh, to make it a little bit more secure. But because this uh, trim piece here is very light, if you were to do one of the ceramic ones, you would obviously want to um, put a more secure nail because those are pretty heavy. Um, but for this, we'll just use a little bit of glue all the way down and spread it kind of evenly. And again, you don't want to use too much because you, while it does dry clear, um, you don't want it to kind of spread out. So I'm actually just going to take my finger and make sure that each area has some um, on there. Definitely all your edges and things like that need to have glue. That way everything is equally secure. So now I have glue on my finger. Um, all right. And did I mention I do this? I did this in white. I decided to do the trim piece in white to add a little bit of a contrast there. So I'm just going to line up everything the way that I think it should be. And we're just going to kind of press down. Make sure everything's on there pretty good. And we're just going to let that dry. I did have a little extra smudging here and I'm just going to wipe that off. You want to make sure you wipe off any extra glue that you see. Um, obviously it would be done better with a rag or a Q-tip. I prefer a Q-tip because um, a rag could move your board. If you use a Q-tip you can kind of just get in there lightly and not move it. So, our trim piece is installed. And let's make sure it looks straight. I don't think it does. For the most part. And it looks like it's in the center. There. Alright, so now we are going to put in our plate racks. Now, I have my plate racks cut perfectly even so that they will um, fit really snugly in there and I won't have to use any kinds of glue or anything like that. So what you want to do um, with your plates, I always pick the one that looks the best to go in the front. You want to pick, if you have any that have mistakes or anything like that, put those in the back because no one's ever going to see those. So actually what I'm going to do, I don't really even need to glue these, but I'm going to just to make myself feel better about it um, because again, they do fit very snugly in here. So um, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here. Um, I don't even really need to, I'm not going to put it on the bottom simply because um, when you slide this in here, it may leave a glue tread. So um, I don't want glue to be down here on my bottom shelf. So I'm just going to put it on the top. And I'm going to bring it in from the side here. And we're just going to push that all the way back in there, 
so that it is a perfect fit. In there um, and I'm actually gonna get a hammer and kind of knock it and I made some marks here on my paint so I can just go over that with a little bit of touch-up paint in there um, when that slid in so we'll have to fix that um, as well so that piece is in now for your front piece again same scenario um, I always find the side that looks the best and put it on the front so I'm going to do a little strip of glue here now with this one You'll want to put it in from the back. You're not going to push it forward um, because if you push it forward, you can scuff up your bars here. You can scuff up the top. So it's just better to put it in and, and um, pull forward as far as put instead of pushing it back. So we're just going to pull this in here. Uh oh, these came loose. Uh oh. These can be a bit of a pain um, to get in there. So we just want to make sure that we have it. And again, I just did glue on the front there. And, um,. I'm going to hold that for a second, and I actually pulled my trim piece there a little bit loose. So I'm just going to hold that for a second, just to let that glue adhere. So uh, if you have wood clamps, uh, you can use wood clamps in there to, uh, to hold it and make sure that the glue adheres. Um, because I had such a snug fit here, I didn't need the wood clamps, but you can use those as well. Um, also, another thing, if you want to, you can it, secure it even further with uh, your wood screws, which I showed as supplies needed earlier. I've chosen not to use wood screws because it is really secure without them. So, why well, have more work? Um, so, I've opted not to do the wood screws and just the wood glue. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and install the other side. And then, I will show you guys how to put in the hooks on the bottom for your cups next. We have finished uh, installing all of our plate racks, as you see. And now we are going to put in our little cup holders uh, on the bottom. So what I need to do uh, to get this done and so that all of these are equal is I'm going to measure the entire width of the center portion of the cabinet and divide equally so that my hooks are placed um, evenly apart. So what I need to do is, uh, there are nine different hooks that I have. These are just, uh, I don't know if you can see them, but they're little um, one inch gold hooks. Uh, again, relatively inexpensive at uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. So I'm going to measure the um, width here of my cabinet. And it is about 38 and a quarter so 38 and a quarter divided by nine you're looking at right around four and a quarter uh, per segment so i'm going to go across and measure all of my little dots here um and you also want to measure uh the width as well so that they can be evenly in the center so the width of my segment is eight inches so every four and a quarter in and eight down I'm going to again create a grid there um, so I'm going to make a mark at four and a quarter and then go in four inches which will be a little bit easier if I do it from the back so in at four inches 
So four and a quarter and four, that's directly center. These are just little screw-in hooks. So all I need to do is put a little pressure. And getting these started is usually the hardest. So there it goes. Now we're cooking. And as you can see, there is one hook installed. Actually, I have to go in a little bit more. In there. And you want to make sure that it's straight. So there is our first hook in. And I'm going to go down through here and install all of my hooks. And then we will in show how to install the bracket. So I will be back in just a second. Or actually probably like 45 minutes because it takes a second to get these in. Okay, bye. Okay, so I finished all of my hooks. Um, it actually only took about 20 minutes. I was surprised that first hook must have been a fluke. And actually, I decided to go with eight um, because I felt like that would make my cups hang a little bit better. I felt like it would be a little bit crowded with nine hooks. So, it's still upside down, but here we go final product um so now we just need to hang the or install the hanger on the back and we will be done it's still upside down so anyways be back in a second for distressing you're going to want to um basically just kind of scuff up and don't be too heavy-handed about it because you don't want to actually sand your piece um, you're just going to kind of scuff up along the edges. Um, I like to do along the edges, um, you know, on some of the decor. And basically, I'm, you just kind of do it very lightly, um, just so that some of the gray shows through. But I'll do it along, like, the um, kind of curvatures, like, along these areas here, just to bring out some of the darker uh, gray undertones in there and I'm going to do the whole piece I don't I like to do a little bit of scuffing I don't like to do a lot of scuffing I just like it to look a little bit worn um some people like a lot of distressing I personally think that it will get distressing over time and it will look a little bit more natural than if you do it yourself um so I'm going to go ahead and do that and then we will install the bracket and then we'll be ready to put it on the wall. So I'll be back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I have finished the distressing, as you can see, or at least I've finished this portion. Um, you know, you just go along the edges of all of your pieces uh, with emphasis on, <laughs> big hand, um, emphasis on any of the curvatures and things like that. Um, you know, just kind of scuffing up varying areas. Um, on your piece, uh, you know, I put a lot of emphasis on any of the little decorative items and things like that. But you just take your sandpaper and go along the edges, and you can have as much scuffing or as little scuffing as you like. Um, but this is what I have so far, and now we're just going to put in our hanging bracket. So I will be back. Okay, now that we are done distressing our china cabinet, we are going to install our hanging system. Um, as mentioned earlier about the hangman hanging system, and basically what it is, is an interlocking bracket system uh, that will hold up to 200 pounds. Because I feel like this piece is going to be pretty heavy, I'm going to use two of these. Uh, traditionally, you would just hang it in the center, but because I'm doing two, I'm going to put one on each side of the center. So this is the way that it works, and this is what it comes with. Um, you have your portion that you attach to your cabinet, which is going to be here, and then this will go on the wall, and they interlock with one another and stay like so. Um, it also comes with... Uh, your screws and things that go in the wall in addition to your wall anchors and what I like best is a little level insert that you put in the center here so that you can make sure that your wall bracket is in the center of your or is level um, with your wall so what I need to do first as I mentioned earlier is uh, that this cabinet is 40 inches long so obviously the center is going to be at 20 inches so I'm going to use my sturdy 
uh, measuring tool, uh, ruler, and find the center, um, which is going to be at 20 inches here. And um, these brackets, which I did not mention, are 18 inches long. So two of these is going to be at 36 inches long, which means I'm going to have four extra inches um, which will be divided by two. So you'll have two, you'll want to come in two inches on each side to install these. So I'm going to measure in from the side two inches and make a mark there, which I've already pre-marked. Um, and then I will go from the other side and pre-mark that as well. Um, what you will want to do is once you have your first uh, segment or your mark there, you'll go in and put where you want your holes. Now this only comes with four screws. Um, if you want to put more screws so it's a little bit more secure, you can do that. They do come with very short, probably half inch screws or quarter inch screws to go in there. Um, I'm probably going to use a little bit more than what's provided just because of the, the heftiness of my cabinet. Um, also, uh, another thing, um, you're going to want to make sure that you install it in a secure wood area. Um, if you put this in the center or anywhere else on your cabinet, you're going to see your holes on the other side because you have to think this is not a closed system. This is open on the front and you don't want to drill holes so that everyone else can see where you've put your hanging system. So I'm going to go ahead and install my pieces here, uh, mark everything, uh, pre-drill my holes because you do want to pre-drill those so that you have everything nice and even before you uh, put in your screws and everything. And um, I will be back once I have my system installed. All right, so we have finished the installation of the bracket system. And um, a few extra notes. Um, I didn't go over this earlier, but um, you will need a 1 8 inch drill bit to pre-drill your holes. Um, I chose to do two on each end and then one kind of in the center. Um, and there were actually five screws in the pack instead of four. So there were five screws. Another thing, you want to make sure that these are level. Um, I just used my, if you have a level, you can use it. I have one, I just didn't feel like getting it. But I used the little level that came with the system. And just made sure that all of my holes were level as I went. I um, screwed in the ones on the ends first, made sure it was level, and then put in my extra little um, security screws there. So I do have both brackets installed. So now we are ready. It is officially finished. We are ready to put it on the wall. So um, basically all I have to do for that is install this portion on the wall. Make sure it's level. So I will be back to you guys with a completely finished china cabinet hung on the wall with dishes in it. And let's hope it stays. Yay! Okay. So as you can see, we have installed, with the help of my mom who's down here visiting, um, installed the china cabinet. Um, and I put some dishes on here. Let's pray it stays. I did put both brackets on there. So it should hold up to 400 pounds. Um, as you can see, it's just a nice way to display my dishes and things that I've had kind of sitting around on my table. Um, and it gives a really nice, uh, you know, French country or shabby chic look. I put all of my white dishware up there. But I think my plate holders turned out really nice. And my little decor here up at the top turned out really good. So this is the final product. Total investment of this whole thing, drum roll, da 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 da, $58.97. Um, that include not only the cabinet, the dowel rods, all six cans of paint, um, my little decal up here, the screws and things that I needed, my glue that I had to buy extra, and my little hooks here on the bottom. So as you can see, you can get a very nice, shabby chic inspired uh, china cabinet for $58. If I were to go to an antique store, which I have multiple times to try to find one of these, they're $258 and up, um, sometimes three and $400 depending upon the size. This one being 40 inches across would usually be anywhere from $250 to $350 as far as that goes. Um, but 
love the way it turned out um, all you have to do is get a little creative and pull the tools that you have and you can end up with a really nice piece on a budget so balling on a budget I hope this helped you guys if you guys have any um, questions feel free to comment below and I will be glad to answer and help you out thanks so much and come back for my next project which is going to be a chair reupholstery that I got at Goodwill yesterday when I went to go get paint for four dollars so I'll see you next time bye a special thanks to all of you guys who took the time to watch my vid and I hope that it helped all of you DIYers on a budget.